Hi everyone, I'm Luke, and I am the crazy person who has designed these backlighting PCBs for the Open Hornet F-18 simulator. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to assemble your panel to go from a bag of bits to a fully working backlit panel. Just for a little bit of background before we go into anything, once you receive your panel, it is deassembled with unsoldered connectors for the simple reason of minimizing shipping cost. In today's day and age, um, having the package as small as possible saves you a lot of money, especially because chances are most of you are international customers. So in order to keep that cost down, I keep um, all of the components off the board so they're nice and small as well as then you can um, get a little bit of enjoyment out of assembling it a bit like Lego. Okay, there's a bit of enjoyment there in, in the way of, you know, getting it up and running. I'll get you nine tenths of the way there and then you can, you know, you get the bonus of being able to assemble it at the end of it. That's my thought process at least. But, um, so before we start, I'm gonna quickly walk through some things that you're gonna need um, to get your panel assembled. You're gonna need your bag, obviously, with your backlit PCB and the panel. If you don't have the panel and you just uh, are just wanting to assemble a standalone PCB for your own panels, same applies. Okay, you're going to want to have a soldering iron. I have, you know, old cheapo um, from a local electronic store. Nothing special. Soldering iron. Okay, uh, you'll want some solder. Any old solder will do. You know, I could do it with the cheapest crap of solder. Any solder will do. You want a little chalk, something, you know, not not high. Um, just a little bit of something you want to prop up, and I'll show you why later on. Just any old off-cut of timber uh, you know, would be more than acceptable. You're going to also want a, a surface that you can solder on without um, damaging anything. In this case, I'm just going to use an old Prusa heat bed um, that doesn't work anymore. And just make sure you've got a good, a good surface that you're not going to burn through and uh, cause any damage. Last thing you're going to want is a source to test your PCB. So if you are if you have the Open Hornet backlighting controller, this is what you'll want to have up and running with the test code uh, that is provided. You'll want to run, have that test code loaded onto the, P, onto the Arduino Mega. And I haven't, you can see I haven't connect, soldered all the connections, but just so long as you've got at least one uh, output port to test your panel, okay? You also provided that has uh, power there. So you need to make sure you've got powered off it. If you don't have a backlighting controller and you are doing it as a standalone operation, all you need to do is provide these run on five volts, not 12, five volts, okay? If you run 12 volts into these, they will go pop. It will not be covered by warranty and you will end in tears. They will not survive under 12 volts. They will happily run on five volts. You can put them the wrong way around, plus and minus the wrong way around. They will not care. They're not going to damage themselves. You can put data down, you know, five volts down the data line. You can put data down the five volts line. It doesn't care, but do not run them on 12 volts, okay? So you need a five volt supply. And I will show you briefly the pinout. So you will see here, the, you have four pin connector. These are what's called a Molex mini fit connector. Bottom two pins are five volts. The top right pin is ground and the first pin is data so that's that's your data coming in ground five volts on the bottom okay so all you need to do is get a you know your power your bench power supply connect five volts um, to the bottom two make you know you can make a cable up a little pigtail cable chop the end off it and uh, connect it to your bench power supply and then just connect five volts to the bottom, either of the bottom or both bottom connectors if you're connecting a lot. Um, ground on there, and then data in, so a data out pin on your Arduino, connect that in there. But easy way to do it, have a backlighting controller, okay? These, um, these, these LEDs, just for context, run in a daisy chain configuration. So data comes in the first LED, and then it daisy chains down, much like a RGB strip uh, lights do. That's essentially what these are. These are glorified RGB strip lights and it gives you great flexibility because you can control every single pixel individually and with color and brightness. So if you see a hotspot, we can go in and adjust that. But um, for now, we'll get on to assembly. Now opening up your bag, you're gonna have 
several things pop out at you. Get it all out, empty bag. You'll have one cable, uh, piggyback, piggy tail, piggyback cable. You may not have this depending on if you've ordered standalone panels or if you've ordered a full kit. If you've ordered a full kit, you will receive piggyback cables for all the panels to connect to each other. Um, you just daisy chain them down. Or if you don't have that, you will be provided with connectors. So what we'll have, we'll have legend plate, light plate, back plate, PCB. All of these, as you can see, are brown. That is just some protective paper. I've removed the protective paper on this side. I will leave it on for shipping so that if you want to paint the outside of these black or to, to hide light bleed, you're more than welcome to do so and then paint it and then pull this off once you're done with that. Okay, it also protects them in shipping so you don't have scratches. Uh, same applies to the back plate. You can pull, peel that off um, once, you, once you arrive it. You get that little new plastic peel feel, which is cool. And uh, it also protects it nicely for shipping. Finally, we have the PCB, front and back. So we don't need the panel for now. So we'll set the three pieces, legend plate, light plate, and back plate aside, because we won't need them until the final stage. We'll grab our PCB and we'll look at our hardware bag. You'll receive some derivative of this bag, which will contain a number of different components. Um, there's some hardware, so for selecting, sorry, for clamping panels together, I'll give you some, there'll be some screws there that uh, you are used to sandwich the panels together. There will be an LED, and there will be some connectors. These connectors here are Molex Mini Fit connectors. These are what go onto the PCB. You'll need some, you'll have some plugs um, to either, if you have a piggyback cable, they're already terminated onto the, onto the cable. If uh, you order a standalone panel, you'll just receive some empty plugs and you will have to make your own cable, okay? You'll get two of them, one for in and out. And then you will receive some plastic, uh, sorry, metal connectors that are what go on to the end of the cables. So the individual, this is how you make a cable. You terminate the Molex connector, a cable with um, these Molex uh, terminals. They then click into the uh, click into the plug, like so. You go in, you hear a click. Once these go in, these do not come out again without a very expensive pin removal tool from Molex. So be very sure when you put these in and you're making a cable that the pin arrangement is um, stays one to one, basically. There is zero crossover across them. So top left, looking at two connectors end to end, pin one is pin one, two is two, three is three, four is four. Okay. There's no crossover funkiness going on. Just look at both ends of the connectors. Top left is top left, top right is top right, bottom left, and so on. Okay. Nice and simple, but make sure you get that right when you're making the cables. So, because if you if you uh, push the connector into here, push the cable in, and you get it wrong, it's basically a write-off. Um, there's no way to get it out without ripping the connector apart, which is good because it's a very secure connection. So, we've got our bits and pieces. For today, I'm going to assume you know how to connect a cable and you have a pre-terminated cable ready to go. It's very simple. If not, use up to 16 gauge wire, crimp the two ends to get, crimp each end uh, with the connectors. You can just use a set of pointy nose pliers, crimp them together and off you go. So, cable, PCB. Flip the PCB over, you'll see two ports on the back, through and in. Self-explanatory, in is where the data and power are coming in, through is a daisy chain onto the next panel. So, what we'll want to do first, I would recommend you do the capacitor. There's a capacitor um, on here, optional but highly recommended for when you do multiple panels, long panel chains. This removes a lot of the high frequency noise and just stables, stabilizes out that power supply. So if you're doing any funky effects or anything like that, we don't have big voltage fluctuations if lots of panels turn on very suddenly, okay? So what you want to do is a little bit ghetto in this situation because this is a uh, this is a surface mount capacitor. But what you want to do is line it up. Make sure you get it's it's a little bit D-shaped, 
So line up that D, the, the cornered edges there, onto the edge of the PCB, like so. Grab your soldering iron, grab some solder, and just touch each edge. You don't need a massively massive connection with these, just a basic connection. So I'm applying a little bit of solder to the pad, getting my capacitor, and getting it into position. A little bit of practice makes perfect, but um, it's not mission critical, you can see. So I'm just grabbing, putting a soldering iron on the tip of the capacitor, and then applying a little bit of solder. Once the pad gets hot enough, the solder will flow from the iron to the pad. Now this is a little bit hot. You have to make sure you got your iron nice and hot because um, these connections are designed for high current. So they will, the heat will flow straight out of this pad onto the, um, into the PCB very quickly. So we want to try and like turbo blast it and uh, make sure we heat it up nice and quickly so we get a good connection there without sending all the heat to the PCB. Okay, now we've got a reasonable connection there. What we want to do next is grab our two connectors and mount them on. Make sure they are keyed the right way. There is a, a notch there where the clip of the connector goes on. Make sure you get that on the right way round. Okay, so it all matches up. I would put both of them in. And then this is where our little piece of chalk comes in. Hold them with your finger and then flip it over so they don't just fall out. Put your little chuck down, rest the, uh, rest the edge of the PCB opposite the connectors down, and uh, place the PCB on the ground with the connectors facing down. As you can see here, it's a little bit high, so what I'm gonna do is just rotate this chuck and tuck it in there so it's the right height. It just makes sure that the uh, PCB is level when you're soldering. Now, grab your solder and sol solder up all four pins here. Whilst you're doing this, um, there's no massive need for a heap of solder. You don't, don't go crazy, um, just get the bare minimum that you need on there. Um, these will be taking high current if you're doing multiple uh, panels. If you've just got a standalone single panel, yeah, these aren't going to take a lot of current. But um, in, a, in a configuration where you've got all white going at once, if they're all set to white or other you know, high brightness situation, there is every likelihood that um, these will take a lot of current. So you just want to make sure you've got good connections there. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a bad day. And uh, pulling them apart, pulling your sim, no one wants to pull their sim apart to find a faulty solder connection. Okay, so give these good solder amount. That chocks just slip slightly. The chock isn't really needed um, if you have one of the funky, the nice little, you know, PCB clips or whatnot that you put on a soldering stand. I'm a bit ghetto, so this is my ghetto setup. If you have extra tools that make soldering easier, good for you. Now there are cutouts in the PCB. Uh, there are cutouts in the back plate for these to hide in. So feel free to, um, you know, apply solder. Don't have to worry about it bubbling over too much, just so long as we don't bridge any pins together. Okay, now those are together. We have a capacitor and two connectors soldered onto that PCB. Great. Now what you want to do is grab your lead that you've made or is provided, plug it into, and you know, any of the ports, but probably port one of the backlighting controller, pop it in, nice click, we're in there. And then what we want to do is plug our connector into the in port of the PCB. And hey presto, we have a working PCB. Check it, let it run through its test sequence, check that we've got you know good red, green, blue pixels on all of them and then the white is just to verify that they're all the same color um, once once they're all on together okay so once you check that you've got your led still in hand now some
panels if they are some panels if they are um, let's say not accessible so your master arm if they're not accessible uh, at all like there's no way to visually see them without ripping the panel apart um, I haven't uh, put an LED uh, a ready LED this LED for ones that do have them if I grab another one is simply to show when the power is present so if there's power to a panel the the LED will light up so you'll see on this panel per se this is the comms panel you'll see your LED hole there and then that's you just tucks in like that any old through hole will do um, not fussy it's uh, now time once you've got that up and running to assemble it so unplug your connector there lovely what you want to do is grab your back plate your light plate and your legend plate make sure you've peeled your plastic off so peel that paper off um, now or you know don't if you're gonna paint them uh, to maybe leave it on note though that um, the light plate if you leave them on and then wonder why there's no light coming through that's why <laughs> make sure so if you're wondering why there's no light coming through when you do this and then you uh, put it all together uh, that's why you got to take your paper off but don't take it off if you're gonna paint them um, so unscrew the wash the nut and the washer through they go and then we have one two tighten them up and then plug it in check it all looks good now you can see mm, that's kind of dim it's because I've left the paper on behind that ledge that light plate so if that's the case you just got to pop it off and take that paper off um, as you can see there's light coming around the side that is by design, um, there is no other way to avoid that, so if you need to, um, paint, grab some black, any old black paint, and um, paint the edges of the panels to uh, mask that out. I personally don't mind it, I think it looks nice, it gives sort of the other area around the panels a little bit of glow, but if you want a nice light sealed sort of look, um, that's totally fine, uh, up to you. So now once we put it together, like this, stick it on, screw, screw, tighten it up. Also should be worth mentioning if you have any switch hardware that you need to connect, you should do that before sandwiching it all together, but this is just for testing, just to have a look at it. Because um, the switches clamp onto the back plate and the light, uh, the back plate and the PCB. So just need to be aware of that. But, all together, if I go and turn the lights off, I'll do a quick test. Block that out so it doesn't blind you. But you can see this is outputting at full brightness currently. Uh, I'll just put my finger over that so it doesn't absolutely blow the camera out. But as you can see, that's what it looks like when it's lit up. Um, you can see it going through its test sequence there. And that is one fully assembled panel. So, hope that was useful. Sorry if that was a bit long winded. Completely unscripted, mind you. But um, yeah, that's how to assemble a backlit. Open Hornet PCB. Take care.